Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? You can hear me? I can't hear me. I can hear me now. Y'all good back there? Oh, there we go. <laughs> good morning. The word says now, praise be unto God who gives us the victory. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to try to convince God to do something for you that he has already done. It says, praise be unto God who gives us. This morning you have come with victory given to you. So when something's given to you, the only thing left to do is to praise. That's my part. It's not to try to work something, earn something, oh, try to beg for something. I'm here this morning to praise the Lord for the victory He has given me. Oh, He's given you the victory this morning. Lift your voice, lift your hands, and praise Him for the victory. Father, we glorify You. We thank You for the victory. You always, always bring us in the triumph. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's enter into His presence today where there is fullness of joy.
Oh, Jesus, we honor you today. We thank you for all that you have in store for us. We respond and we receive to your plan today. Lord, have your way in this service today. We're hungry, ready to receive from heaven today. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here today? Hallelujah. Why don't you greet somebody and tell them you're glad to see them and you can have a seat. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you all. I want to welcome those watching online all over the globe. Thank you all for taking time to tune in. Give them a warm welcome. We're so blessed you could join us today. Whether you're watching this live or later on, I believe you're going to receive something great in this service tonight, uh, this morning. So thank you for taking time to watch. I also want to welcome any first-time visitors. If, if you say this is your very first time here, we want to recognize you and thank you for coming. So just raise your hand. We just want to give you some more information about our church and a free gift. If that's you, your very first time, raise your hand for us to see you. Well, just a few quick announcements. I want to remind everybody there is going to be a prayer service tonight. It'll be at 5 p.m. And our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California begins in one week. So March 25th through the 29th, that's the first one for this year. Uh, services will begin on Monday night at, uh, at 7 p.m. and then continue Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So if you're in the Fresno area, area, please come out. We would love to have you. Just let us know by registering at deframeministries.org. Of course, Pastor Nancy is going to be there ministering for all the evening services. Reverend Joel and Pastor Amy Siegel are going to be doing the morning services. Of course, David Ellis is going to be there. Uh, and uh, we're just expecting great things. This is our first time doing a Miracle Crusade in Fresno. But like I said, everyone that's planning to attend, please let us know as soon as possible by registering at deframeministries.org. It's free. It's just to help us to uh, plan ahead, but only if you're coming in person. So if you're watching and you're coming in person, you haven't registered yet, I'm talking to you. Please register. Let us know. We're going to be in a venue, and it really is helpful for us to know ahead of time how many people to expect. So that's coming up in one week. It's also going to be live streamed, so y'all can all tune in as well online. The kids' choirs, they will have a mandatory Easter practice this coming Saturday, March 23rd. Tiny Tots arrival time is 8.45 a.m. Trailblazers is 9.45 a.m. Youth arrival is 10.45 a.m. So please make sure your kids are here for this important practice. And then our Easter program is on Sunday, March 31st. We're now accepting donations of Easter candy. For the Easter egg hunt, please bring individually wrapped candy donations to the trunk in the foyer. Uh, no chocolate, please, in case it melts in the, uh, in the eggs, and make sure the candy is small enough to fit in eggs. Uh, make plans to join us for our annual prayer conference that'll be held here at Wood Harvest Church, April 9th through the 11th. So that's Tuesday at 7 p.m., Wednesday and Thursday at 10 a.m., 7 p.m. Pastor Nancy's going to be ministering along with Pastor Noel Ramos. So like, like we've been saying, please register for this as well. David Ellis will also be having worship training sessions during the prayer conference Wednesday and Thursday after the morning services. Um, and we also ask the congregation to make sure you please sign up for the open positions in the MOH app. Please do that as soon as possible. And then also Dr. Michael Jacobs, he will be here ministering on Saturday, April 14th, and Tuesday, April 16th, here at World Harvest Church. So that's a huge blessing. Make it if you can. Uh, you'll be blessed by his ministry. And then also a special a reminder and announcement. We ask that if the bookstore is closed and they are, you can clearly see the dividers are up and blocking you off, that means you can't purchase anything anymore. So don't take stuff and leave cash. We don't, we don't, we don't take uh, IOUs, so, you know, we don't accept that. Everything is accounted for and inventoried, so, you know, if we run a report and then you pay us later, our things are going to be off. So it's ran like a store. You wouldn't do it at Target. You can't do it here either. <clears throat> so sorry about that, but we are open before and after services and during conferences, so just please be respectful of that, and uh, we would love to help you, but if it's closed, that means you can't take anything. Cash, we don't want, we don't want you leaving cash because we don't know what you took. Anyway, so that's all for announcements. Ushers bring the trunk offering here to the front.
This is not our regular tithes and offerings. We'll receive that in just a moment. This is for loose change dollar bills. It goes to cleaning the building, maintaining the building, and then we'll receive our tithes and offerings in a minute. Until then, go ahead and stand up with me, and let's just take a few moments to fellowship.
have to get her quiet before her introduction. Get her happy. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Turn with me if you would. I want to go to two places this morning for tithes and offerings. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And if you look at verse, and I won't read all of this, but let's start in verse um, 15. And this is Paul writing to the church there in Philippi. And you Philippians yourself well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my needs, not only once, but a second time. Not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which increases to your credit the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. But I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need and am amply sufficient supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent me. They are the fragrant odor of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes in, which he delights. And my God will liberally supply, fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now go with me if you would to Malachi turn over. I normally don't go to two passages, two passages during the offering, but I want you to see something here. Math, Malachi chapter three, verse eight, will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me, but you say, in what way do we rob or defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse for you are robbing me. Even this whole nation, bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer, insects and plagues for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. There's two things I want us to look at here. The first thing is, is when Paul was writing to the church in Philippi, he said, your offering came and it went up before the Lord as a sweet smelling aroma. Notice it said it went up before God. And here it talks about how when they bring their tithe offerings, that as they did that, what happened? God opened the windows of heaven and what came out, it poured out a blessing. So we see this divine exchange between our offerings, what we bring to God, that something comes up and he brings something else back down. And uh, we know this, that there's not, my father-in-law used to talk about, there's not windows that could open anymore. When Jesus came and paid the price and there was no more divide between man and God. And we, we said this earlier when I opened the service, praise be unto God who gives us the victory. He doesn't have to open any victory. He doesn't have to uh, make a new victory happen. It's already been won. But when he opens uh, up for us, as he has through salvation, he's opened up all victory for us. But what do we still need to do? Bring an offering to him. Bring our gift to him. Bring our tithe to him. And what happens is it goes up before him, goes up before God. And what goes up, what the word says, if it goes up uh, in Malachi, it says it's gonna be poured out. That hasn't changed. Paul called it a harvest, that there will be a harvest for you. And he said, every need will be met, but you've got to bring something before him. 
We can't withhold from God and expect Him to pour out to us all that we need, all the, the, the reward into our life, all of the harvest. So remember this morning as you're giving, you're bringing not something to the church. You're not just bringing something to the natural house. You're bringing something up before Him and He can see it. He can smell it. It's beautiful before Him. It's precious before Him. And all of your generosity goes up before him. And then he says, I'm ready to pour it all back out. Amen. It's called a divine exchange. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of every divine exchange I can with God. I want to cooperate with him in every way that I can. And one of the ways uh, that we can offer up, you know what else is, is a, a sweet sacrifice unto God? When we walk in love. That's also uh, stated as a sacrifice, a sweet sacrifice, as we walk in love with one another. What is that? As we walk in love and we uh, bring our right hearts and our right attitudes that, that goes up before Him. Amen. So our offering and our tithe, they don't just come and get marked down in a book somewhere. Catalog so that your taxes can show your giving statement at the end of the tax season. It goes up to somebody much higher than the IRS. It goes up to heaven. As you give this morning, you're offering with the right heart, not withholding, not begrudgingly, it says in 2 Corinthians, but it goes up with the right heart. My goodness, he has things waiting to be poured out, ushered in, grown up, uh, the, the hand of the Lord on your business, uh, the blessing on what you set your hand to, divine ideas we talked about last week. And we went over, why do we pray? Divine ideas, open doors of financial opportunity and lost funds restored back in multiplied fashion. How can we lay hold of things? With our words of faith. But when we bring our offering, what does that do? It just enables God to pour out even more so in those arenas, amen? So are you ready to give this morning? If you need an offering envelope, there should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. You can do text to give, WHC 951-900-3991, DufresneMinistries.org, and uh, make your checks payable to World Harvest Church. This is our church offering. We have DM day today. We'll receive an offering for Dufresne Ministries. I've got some testimonies to share with you. Um, uh, uh, regarding Dufresne Ministries because I know we get to have a lot of great testimonies here of what God's doing at World Harvest Church, but I just want to let you know of the things that we're doing this year and what's coming up and what has already happened. That We, we get flooded with testimonies. Every week, Brianna's always sending out testimonies to the staff. Uh, we want to give you some of those this morning. Um, but also, uh, so if you brought your gift, give that at the end. We'll receive the Dufresne Ministries offering at the end, this is just our tithes and offerings this morning. Amen. Are you ready to give this morning? Before we do, go ahead and let's bring up our brand new baby. We've been waiting for a few weeks now. Our little busy, sweet baby, mini Caitlin. I'm surprised she hasn't already gotten a job. If you know the Harmon family, and Steve, of course, her husband, Miss Caitlin's husband, if you know them, they are workhorses. And uh, we timed it just right because Brianna was out and Miss Caitlin, she does our children's choir and works in our children's department. And I said, we cannot have both of them out or we will have absolutely no songs for Easter. So uh, y'all, y'all timed it perfectly. Isn't she beautiful? Tell everybody her full name. Zoe Rose Walderman. Zoe Rose Walderman. I call her Mini Noah. I think she looks like Noah. That's just my purple There's an opinion. You're going to be so showered with all the love. I told your, your sister, and germs. <laughs> she is wide awake. She said uh, she stays awake, not at night, during the day. Um, because again, she, I think she's looking to get her first job and get busy just like her mama. Her mama is one busy lady, very sharp, and she's just going to be her little assistant, isn't she? She is trying to suck her thumb. I told her, I said, 
if she's a thumb sucker, they're the happiest kids, the happiest babies. Can you see? There we, there we go. She is wide awake. She's been waiting for this moment. Y'all, she's been ready. She, she, she came ready this morning. Okay, she came prepared. Do you have your offering? Okay. <laughs> Zoe Rosa, we'll be seeing her more often around here. And uh, I told her I, we got to see her um, at, who was it? Sayana's baby shower. And that was just a few weeks ago. And she already, <laughs> she already looks so much bigger. Uh, so time goes by so quickly. And then you'll be ready to have another baby. Yes. <laughs> You're getting there already? Well, she, how many siblings do you have, Steve? One. She has five. So combination of seven, eight, four, three. Okay, we'll take them all. However many you'll give us. Congratulations, y'all. Look at her. Look at her. She's not done with her greeting of the people. She's trying to turn her. If you can't see her, she's trying to turn around. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you see that face? Can y'all see that face? I know, you see the choir now? Are you ready to sing? <laughs> well, congratulations, and we'll take another. She's so cute. And I'm looking for somebody that I don't, oh, there he is. Joe and Miss Sarah. Some came back with a new last name, in case you didn't know. Wave your hand, Joe, stand up. Joe's not embarrassed, but I wanted to embarrass Sarah. Stand up, Sarah. Woo! Congratulations, they went home to New York, Fredonia, New York, to her dad's church, and she was absolutely gorgeous. They had a beautiful wedding, and now they're back and ready to get back to work and just have kids, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> We're so happy for both of them. He is a uh, resident, one of our hopefully semi-permanent resident Canadians. We'll, we'll hopefully make it more permanent. Um, but Joe is here now permanently stuck with us. And we're not letting him go no matter what Pastor Craig says. <laughs> uh, so congratulations, you guys. We're thrilled for you and the start of your new adventure. Amen. Are you ready to give? Ushers, go ahead and come forward. Let's go ahead and so our offering, bring our tithes, worship the Lord with our giving this morning. Hold your uh, offering up before him. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We worship you with our giving. We honor you this morning. You're our provider. You're our source, Father. Avenues may change. Uh, Father, jobs may change. Businesses may change. Economies change. You never change. You are forever the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what we see in your word, you're doing today, Father. You are an abundant God, Father, fully supplying all of our needs. We bring the tithe to you to worship you, back to you, Father, and we bring our offering up before you. We know, Father, that you see it, and we know, Father, that you receive that offering. And as we sow it this morning, we can declare an abundant harvest for every giver. Devil, you take your hands off of the harvest that belongs to them. We loose the power of God, the angels of God, to go and cause the increase to come into their lives. We thank you for divine ideas for this congregation. Open doors of financial opportunity and lost funds restored back in multiplied fashion in Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, go ahead. Yeah. 
symptoms in your body and you want to have hands laid on you and that healing anointing go into your body if you've come this morning with any needs I want to invite you to come up here and we'll minister to you we'll lay hands on you and that healing anointing is going to go into your body and when it does it's going to make a change in every cell in every organ in every muscle we believe in the power of God. We believe in the healing power of God. So come up here expecting I'm not the healer. It's not me that does the healing. I'm just a carrier and 
uh, an obedient servant to what the word says. Number one, it says, believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But number two, there's what's called a healing anointing. That Jesus, he went about preaching, teaching, and healing. And there is an, a healing anointing on this uh, ministry and this family. And it's a tangible healing anointing. And so when hands are laid on you, I believe that anointing, not just an agreement or a prayer of agreement, but the anointing is going to go into your body and you shall be whole. If you're up here, just lift your hands before God. Worship the healer. Worship the great physician. Jesus, we worship you this morning. Oh, all the stripes that you took, every disease laid on your body, every symptom, every pain, you took every bit of it. We can be completely free. When I lay my hands on these this morning, they shall be whole in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. the healer this morning we worship you Jesus we worship you we worship you is there anyone in here and you have pain uh, down the right side of your spine I don't know if it's a muscle I don't know if it's your spine uh, if it what it's related to but it seems like the right side down the right side is there anyone in here and you have pain down that lift your hands is there anyone come up here you say that's me i've got pain down the right side right over here did you raise your hand come up here i just heard the right side it seems it's just to the right side we thank you father for that anointing praise you father there it goes Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Was there something you couldn't do before? Is there something that would it be hindered? Do something. You're completely whole. Do something. Give action to that. That anointing went in your body. That power went in your back. Can you tell a difference already? In the, yeah? Can you stand up straight? Can you turn, go side to side? <laughs> yeah? Total relief? Getting there? You keep working that. That anointing went in your back. It's going from the top all the way to the bottom. You just keep working it, not hoping it works, but knowing it is working, that power. I'm, I'm leaving here completely whole of all back. I don't have back problems anymore. Say, I'm completely healed, completely whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift your hands. Glory to God. Glory. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. What a wonderful healer, wonderful Savior. We magnify you. We magnify you, Jesus. you've had pain seems like right across here in the front of your head your brow uh, I don't know if you'd call it a headache um, but there is severe pain here above your eyes it comes and goes is there anyone in here you say that's me I've got pain right here it could be somebody come up here it could be somebody watching online right here you deal with pain right across here I don't know if it's allergies and injury your eyes you have struggle trouble with your eyes and it causes pain is there anyone else you say that to me come up here anyone else at all father we thank you there it goes healed in Jesus name all that gone all that pain we thank you father we worship you we thank you father we give you glory, we give you praise. Oh, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Just worship him, just worship him. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him. Just worship him. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you and we worship you. I worship you. Worship you, Jesus. We glorify. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Just lift your hands and worship him. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Jesus, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. someone in here and you've had you've got problems with your hips could be one or both of them problems with your hips is there anyone in your one hip maybe it was injured is there anyone you say that's me and I've got problems come here Miss Lori with your hips could be when you sit when you stand when you try to work anyone at all you say I've got problems with my hips 
We thank You, Father. We thank You, Father, for that healing power. We thank You, Father. your hands to him this morning say that healing anointing is working in my body that power is working in my body we praise you Jesus we praise you Jesus we praise you Jesus we praise you praise you we praise you there's someone in here I, I just sense real strong and I want to clarify this you um, we all face difficult seasons in our life but it just seems like there's somebody here um, that your mind is absolutely tormented and harassed um, you're struggling with your mind not you know, not just we're facing decisions and we're facing, you know, things, but I mean, you cannot seem to get victory and get past. It sits on you as a weight and a torment. I just picture you in tears because you want to feel normal and you don't feel normal. Listen, we have all faced times and seasons where we needed the help of the Holy Ghost. If that's you here this morning, there's help for you here. And I just sense there's somebody, maybe more than one, that needs to come down and we can help you this morning. The Word is your answer. The Word is your answer. But this morning, the anointing is here to help jumpstart, push back on some things to give you the help. Amen. Is there anyone else who would join these up here? Oh, God wants us to have peace for our mind as much as he wants us to have healing in our body. If there's anyone else, you say, I just want to be normal in my mind. Come up here. My mind is struggling. It's tormented. I'm waking up at night. I'm waking up in the morning and it's still there. Fear, bombardment, harassment. Is there anyone else? There's help for you this morning. Totally free. You can be totally free. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> but there is an enemy out there who brings the feelings, the fear, the spirit of feel, fear is very real. It's a real spirit, but you have real victory. You have real victory today. Remember what we said earlier, praise be unto God who gives us the victory. You're not having to come up here and earn anything. It has already been given this morning. 
We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you. Free. In Jesus' name, free. In Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. Free. There it goes. You leave him. Harassing spirit, I curse you. No longer troubled, tormented, completely free. From this day on, we thank you, Father. Free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching this morning and you have pain in your body, symptoms, anything that was called out here, maybe your mind. Congregation, just release your faith with me. That anointing is going into your body. If you'll just reach your hand out by faith, the power of God is present right where you're at. And we assign that power to your body, to your hips, to your mind, to your back, we thank you, Father. To any situation, we say, be whole in Jesus' name. Be whole. We thank you, Father, that healing anointing going from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Hallelujah, we praise you for it, Father. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, Father. Miss Kathy, come here. I just gonna do what I saw myself do. It was a little bit earlier, you probably without with the baby. Um, I just saw myself laying hands on your stomach. Father, I thank you. I thank you for that anointing. Thank you, Father, for it. Mm. Whew. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, you're so wonderful, Father. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Did anyone in here this morning come and you have cancer in your body? You've been diagnosed with cancer. Anyone at all, any form, any stage, and there's cancer, and we have not ministered to you. Is there anyone at all? You say, that's me. I'm gonna have hands laid on me. There's cancer. Come up here. Oh, we thank you, Father. Yes, we thank you for that cloth. When it's laid on that body, we curse that cancer. You dry up, die, and leave their body. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Healed and whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. He is a miracle God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. 
Even if your body changes, He doesn't change. We've got to get our eyes off of what changes, off of what can be moved. He doesn't move. He stands firm on His Word of healing. And that healing Word was sent into your body today. Amen? Do you believe that this morning? We'll give Him thanks, give Him praise for it. We thank You, Father. We glorify You. We glorify You. We glorify You, Lord. We glorify You, Lord. We glorify You. We glorify You. We glorify You. We praise You. We praise You. We praise You. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is so good. And He is so good to us. Amen. Well, you can be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We've got our book of the month this month, How You Can Be Led by the Spirit of God. We've continued this for the month um, of March. I know we did this in... Um, February, but I didn't want to rush through it uh, and hurry up too much. I wanted you, some of you, I knew the books are, I kind of go by what they say. Some of y'all had gotten it and it's fine uh, towards the end of the month and February is a semi-short month. We had an extra day this year, uh, but that doesn't count. So we'll call February the short month. We'll keep going with this. So if you have it, make sure you're reading this with us. How you can be led, not how I can be led, not how your spouse can be led, how you can be led by the Spirit of God. Uh, if you have received Jesus and you're a child of God, his spirit is on the inside of you. I love the story of Dad Hagen. Uh, if you don't know his testimony, uh, Dad Hagen was a spiritual father uh, to my pastors growing up and to Pastor Nancy and Dr. Dufresne, my, uh, our, our, my in-laws. And, and his testimony was that he was born with uh, an illness that could not be cured, a defective heart, a blood disease. Uh, there was no hope for him. No one with his condition lived past the age of 15, 16 years old. Uh, and he was, did not know Jesus. He grew up in a denominational church that taught about Jesus, but never taught how to receive Jesus as your personal savior, how to receive him as your Lord. And therefore, they didn't understand uh, how to make it to heaven, how to get to heaven. Uh, it says that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and that heaven is their eternal home. And he did not understand all of this. And so on his deathbed, he's dying. The doctors had given up any hope. He's 15, 16 years old. He's not uh, getting any better. He's only getting worse. And he begins, he ends up dying three times going down. He, he recounts his experience going to hell. His book is out there. Uh, I went to hell talking about his experience and how he called out on the third time. Um, he tried to use his merit of going to church. Going to church does not save you. No more than walking into a restaurant, uh, sitting down and then walking back out fills you up. Just because you're in a place of eating doesn't mean you received. Just because you attend ser services doesn't mean you've received Jesus. We've got to receive. Amen? And that's a one time. And then we can come and be, the Bible says we're partakers of his divine nature. We keep partaking of the wonderful things that the word has provided for us. But on his deathbed, he uh, goes to hell. And on that third time, he cries out to Jesus. And, uh, and he gets pulled back up, comes back into his body, uh, and is praying out and crying out to God, receives Jesus. Well, he begins to get his Bible and read the Bible. Uh, he talked about they didn't read the Bible in their denomination. Pastor Nancy's talked about that. They didn't read the Bible. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, the, the people there, but they didn't know and have the revelation that you can uh, communicate, read, and, and study and grow in God for yourself. And so he begins to read the Bible and he sees eventually uh, that he can be healed. He does not have to stay sick. 
Nobody taught him that. The doctors are giving him up to die. His mother is telling him it'll all be over. And he says that Jesus is a healer. He sees that he does not, according to Mark 11, that he can have what he says. All this revelation as a young boy begins to come to him. And so he takes a hold of it and he realizes one day uh, that he has developed his faith from reading the word of God so much that he hears a voice that says to him, in essence, healed people. (laughs) They're up and out of bed. What do heal people do? They act on their healing. They don't act sick. But what did he hear? He heard the spirit of God. So as a new believer, received, had just received Jesus, not months before that, new to faith, nobody came and taught him and handed him a book that says you can have what you say. Nobody taught him his authority. Nobody had ministered him. Nobody had laid hands on him. Nobody had prophesied over him. And yet, laying there still with the incurable blood disease, the heart condition, he hears a voice that says heal people should be up and out of bed. Healed people go to breakfast. Healed people, what do healed people do? What are you facing today? Do something that defies and says, I am healed. And so he realizes that. And so what does he do? With everything he has, he swings those legs off the side of the bed, grabs a hold with the little strength he had at 90 pounds. And Dad Hagen was not a small man, short man. And he hangs on and he gets up with all the strength that he had. Why? Because he heard a voice. He heard a voice in here that says heal people should be up. What did he learn from that? How to be led. So no matter how long you've known Jesus, no matter how long you have have been having him and received him, been born again, no matter how long you've been in church, no matter how long uh, you've served God, be it long or short, you can hear from the Spirit of God. You can be directed by the Spirit of God, amen? So we want you to get a hold of that book. We've been teaching along these lines. We're gonna continue with some things this morning along these lines. I want you, if you would, to turn with me to Acts chapter one. How many of you are so grateful for the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. He's the gift given to those who are in God's family. Jesus, he is the gift to the whole world. Sent the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. God already had a plan to bring us into fellowship with him. But there is another gift that was sent. Jesus said, I have to go so that the other one may come. Look here in Acts chapter one, in verse four, and being assembled together with him, this is Jesus after uh, he had been raised, he, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for truly, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive, what is that word? Power, say it, power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, Now, This morning, I want to talk about the gift of the Holy Ghost because the gift of the Holy Ghost is who has been, the Holy Ghost has been given to us as this gift. Once we receive Jesus, God is not okay with us living without power. 
Uh, the Holy Ghost comes to live and dwell in you when you receive Jesus. But there's a, another experience with God. And that experience that Jesus is telling his disciples, don't go anywhere. My cousin, John the Baptist, he baptized with water. But there's coming an experience, a baptism experience, that's not gonna just include water, it's gonna include power. And then you're gonna go to the uttermost parts of the world and preach the gospel. Uh, we see that they go over in Acts chapter two, if you'll look here with me, verse one, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place, when suddenly there, there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed, and which settled on each one of them. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other different foreign languages, tongues, as the Spirit kept, kept giving them clear and loud expression in each tongue in appropriate words. Here is when the Holy Ghost entered the earth as power. Say power. I don't know about you, but I know when I come up short in life, <laughs> where my shortcomings are. I know where my failures and my faults, uh, the devil has absolutely no problem, nor do I have any problem myself recognizing where it is that I continue to miss it. <laughs> what I don't know, what I haven't learned, what I haven't experienced, and how about this, what I haven't, haven't received yet. How many of you sometimes we can be so aware of what we don't have, where we haven't been, what education we don't have, what we don't know, the unknown. Sometimes it just, it just glaring in our face. What do we realize? We realize that we don't know everything. We don't see everything. We don't know how to get the, th the things that we have in our heart, the places that we desire, the things that we desire. We don't even know how to get there. But there is somebody called the Holy Ghost, the third part of the Godhead. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in a previous uh, book, he said, it is expedient, it is so important, it is urgent that I go because this other one, the Holy Ghost, he's gotta be here. Jesus was their leading everywhere they went. He was the power everywhere that he went. He was the power of God. He was the healing, delivering. How about this? He was the resurrecting power of God. Didn't he go to Lazarus' grave, right? Didn't he go uh, to Jairus' daughter? So he was not only healing power, he was resurrecting power. He was providing power. He took that little boy's lunch the two loaves, uh, or the, the two fish and the loaves, and they were small, they were not large, and he blessed it, and he multiplied it, and over 5,000 people were fed in abundance with 12 baskets left over. Why? Because the power of God. Jesus, he said, I've gotta go, because I am the power of God now, but when I leave, the power of God is coming to come upon you so that you can go to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of Marietta and do the exact same thing. Amen? The exact same thing. If you're new around here, we do not believe that the Holy Ghost or the gifts of the Spirit have ceased. They continue, in fact, we're in an era and a season and a time that if you believe they've passed away, this is not the time. <laughs> I don't know about you, but power is needed. I want, when Jesus comes back, the power is flowing and just carries us on. Not a crippled church, not a crippled bride. <laughs> Struggling, defeated, broke discouraged, 
Jesus was never discouraged. Why? Because he always had the power of the Holy Ghost that led him. What did the power of, of the Holy Ghost do? It led him right through those who were trying to push him off a cliff. I don't care what's pushing at you today, what's, what's nudging at you, what's trying to force you into defeat, force you into thinking that it's never going to change. You're never coming out. You're never getting healed. The family, the family is never going to change. Whatever's pushing on you, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that rises up. When we get filled with the Holy Ghost, it rises up on the inside and pushes back. You must have power. No believer. Jesus never intended for any believer to live without the infilling of the power of God. It's more than just speaking in tongues. It's power. And in fact, the word says, Paul said that tongues is a sign to the unbeliever. Tongues is the reason we are all here today. And you say, I'm, I've heard that story. Well, you're going to hear it again. Because I want you to know the importance of getting filled with the Holy Ghost and power. And power. People want to focus on how weird tongues is. Power's not weird. Not when you're laying on a deathbed, not when you're sick, not when you cannot answer your situation. Suddenly, everything that God has for us seems right. Don't wait till you get to that place. So my father-in-law grew up in a home with mental illness, alcoholism. His mother uh, was tormented because she got pregnant uh, at the age of 15 and was going to have an abortion with his father. Uh, this is, you know, my husband's grandparents and my children's great grandparents. And they were going to go to Tijuana, abort the child. And my father-in-law later, when he got into the ministry and got into the word and got filled with the Holy Ghost, had an experience with God and saw his mother and his father on his way down to Tijuana, had a vision and saw them and saw an angel come and touched his dad on the head because his father was raised Catholic. And he turned to the mother, Norma, and said, I can't do this. So they went down to Tijuana to get married. No abortion, but a marriage. And uh, my father-in-law would take that marriage certificate. It is in Spanish. He could not read it. But he kept it and he would take it and he would wave it in the air and say, ha ha devil. <laughs> ha ha devil. You tried and you failed. And I believe just that alone probably stirred him, stirred his faith every time something would come up. Because if death couldn't get him, then what else? <laughs> oh, how small everything else is. And so they get married, they come back, they have him, but her father was so distraught and had mental illness himself, wrote a note saying that because she had gotten pregnant and shamed the family, he killed himself in his, in his car uh, there in the garage. And so she lived with that, even though they got married and said, we're not gonna have alcoholism in our home. We're not gonna struggle with these things. They wanted a better life. They worked hard, began to work hard, had more children. Um, but as time passed and more children came and those thoughts began to work, work on my father-in-law's mother, work on Norma, work on her mind, the depression and the oppression that her actions killed her father. Listen, she didn't kill her father. The devil killed her father. He's cruel. That's why we never, ever, young people, don't you ever think it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's entertaining to entertain anything the devil would bring to you because he would love for you to end up exactly like her, her, her father. We don't play with sin because the same devil that authors sin and, and promotes sin and pushes the flesh to sin 
and tempts with sin is the same one that tempted and pushed that man to kill himself. You better know what you're getting into and what you're playing with. Because there is a power opposite the power of the Holy Ghost. You better cling to the right power. Hold to the right power. And so this began to work on her and work on her and they began to drink. And my father-in-law would have to uh, work. He always wanted to make money. He was always making money, selling cans, going. And he was so smart that he would go to the, the beer joint, go to the, the bar and wait outside in the mornings because all the drunk people coming out, out at night would fumble with their keys and their cash and it would fall on the ground and he'd go collect the money. But at some point, even as a young man, he had to take that money and help support and take care of the family because the alcoholism had gotten so severe. And this man uh, on his job, and I'm, I'm fast forwarding, there's many things in this story, but there was this man as he got older and his mother was still alive, still struggling. He would watch her get tied down to the gurney, hauled off to the mental institution over and over again. He would listen to her outside of his window talking. Do you see the little monkeys? Do you see the little monkeys? She was losing her mind. And there was no hope for the family until one day when my father-in-law realized he was headed down the same road and uh, he, he had begun to drink. He had had a child early, gotten married and uh, did not know what it meant to serve God. He knew he was a bad Catholic. He would say it all the time. They were not good Catholics. I don't even know if he went on Easter and Christmas. <laughs> and he would work construction. Uh, he loved framing and he would work with men. And there was one man by the name of Billy Fraser who would ask him over and over and over again, come to church with me, come to church with me. Every week, will you come to church with me? And he would in the most, Pastor Nancy says it, colorful way possible, tell Billy Fraser no. He wasn't interested. And uh, one day after he said about a year and a half of Billy Fraser asking him to come to church, Billy Fraser finally said, would you just come? He said, if I come with you one time, will you leave me alone? Yes, if you come with me one time, I'll leave you alone. So that Sunday, he talked about the one time he went to church because he liked a girl. And they told you in the Catholic church, if you, if you went to any church other than the Catholic church, you'll drop down dead. And so he talked about how he went because he had a crush on a girl. And he remember, he said he stepped one foot in and he didn't die. <laughs> So this time he had the confidence to go in. You know, and I don't know if anybody at his Catholic church told him that or he just kind of conjured that up in his mind. And so he goes into the church with Billy Fraser and it's a Holy Ghost filled church. And they have their worship and they sit down and the preacher gets up to preach. And while he's preaching, there was a Filipino couple sitting, he said, I believe it was the second or third row back in the middle. And they stood up and one began to speak in tongues. And he said, what is this? He said, the hair on the back of his neck stood up. What came out of that? Power. Power. As soon as they began to speak in tongues, power flowed out. Why do we neglect praying in the Holy Ghost when we speak? I'm not talking about you go in the grocery store and speak in tongues. I'm just talking about for our own lives. This was in the proper setting. It was appropriate, and we'll get into some of these things so we know what's appropriate. It was the right setting. And then after the tongues was given, the interpretation came. Now is the time of salvation, and it was outlined how to receive Jesus. He said from that moment on, he couldn't wait for the preacher to stop talking. In fact, the preacher hung his head in embarrassment, but he knew that was for him. What? 
What grabbed him? Was it a polished sermon? Paul said, I cannot speak with words of man's wisdom. I've got to come to you in spirit and power. The words have to have spirit and power. What happens if we just get up and try to handle life with our own natural thinking, our own natural words, our own natural processes, our own natural reasoning, or we can get up praying in the Holy Ghost, go to bed praying in the Holy Ghost, and then we when we speak, there's power with our words. The Bible says when we pray in tongues, we don't speak to men. We're talking directly to God. Go with me, if you would, to Romans. Go to Romans. I want you to see this. Romans 8, verse 26. Look at this. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray to offer nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. Uh, I looked up that word worthily. That also means excellently. We don't even know how to offer up excellently to God the way we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. This is talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. And so when this couple stands up, uh, what did it do? They didn't know. They did not. None of them. They knew how my father-in-law could get saved, but they didn't know how to get him saved. The Holy Ghost knew how to get him saved. The Holy Ghost knew what to do. That power knew what to do. And so when they stood up, so my father-in-law could not wait for the preacher to stop talking. Why? Because there was intercession made even through the tongues and interpretation on his behalf for him to come down to the front. And he went down, he got saved. And from that moment on, the mental illness stopped with him. The alcoholism stopped with him. And the night before his mother in her forties died because her body and her mind were so ravaged and torn up by mental illness and alcohol. He went into her hospital room and helped her to receive Jesus. At that point, he was serving God. He was in the church and he was able to go and minister to her and pull her out of death's grip, of hell's grip. Amen? Why? Because two people were full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Well, if it can rescue a life, what about your finances? (laughs) Right? What about your family? What about your business? The power of the Holy Ghost, it saves, it rescues. That power goes and does a work that we cannot do. If we're speaking unto God in an unknown tongue, then what that does is when I speak to God and pray in the Holy Ghost, it allows power to come down from God and it goes back to my situation. Instead of me trying to hold on to this situation, why don't I let go of it, not only cast the care, but then praying in the Holy Ghost. It says, I'm speaking not unto men, but unto God. Amen. Um, turn over, go to 2 Corinthians. And I think we'll stop here. But I want us to continue along these lines. Um, actually let's go, mm, go to first Corinthians if you would. First Corinthians. And if we look at chapter or 14, chapter 14, verse 13. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic. Therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown tongue should pray for the power to interpret and explain what he says. For if a man pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, 
by the Holy Spirit within me prays, but my mind is unproductive, then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. I will sing with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that's within me. I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding also. This is talking, the King James says, uh, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. That means your mind is not engaged in this. Does the Holy Ghost come on you and move your mouth? Absolutely not. He is such a gentleman. He wants you to receive. When you received Jesus, didn't you ask him? And what did he do? You sensed the peace of God the comfort, that weight of sin lifting, the blessing of God, something had changed on the inside of you. Something had changed even on you. The Holy Ghost is the same way. When we ask to receive the Holy Ghost and say, I wanna be filled with the Holy Ghost, he didn't come on us and make us do something, but we'll sense that peace, we'll sense that power, we'll sense something rising up on the inside. What is that? That is the infilling of the power of God. Now the power of God uh, is going to not just be around me, it's going to fill me up. When we come in here, what is it? What do we sense? The power of God, the presence of God. God's interested in you being filled with that power. Not just waiting to come to Sunday service so I can sense something, so I can feel something, so somebody can lay hands on me. He's interested in you getting filled up with power, not just feeling it on you. Being full of the power of God. How do we get full? We receive the Holy Ghost. And how do we know we're full? One of the initial signs of being full of the Spirit of God, full of the Holy Ghost, is praying in tongues. But he doesn't move our lips for us. He doesn't move your mouth. Just like Jesus, uh, you know, didn't get you when you, you got born again. Nothing changed in your life. He didn't force himself. You have to welcome his victory. You have to welcome his help. So the Holy Ghost, when we receive of the Holy Ghost, we say, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He comes and he fills you, but you got to respond to that. Amen. So I want to this morning give an opportunity. We have been focusing on following the Spirit of God, but I don't think it's right that we not give opportunity. If you haven't been filled with this power, you can this morning. And actually, I, I apologize. I want to read this so that you understand. Go with me over, uh, where did I tell you? Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2 Corinthians. I think it was 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Because I want to see, show you something. Paul ministered so much on the infilling and being full of the Holy Ghost. And I didn't even barely scratch the surface this morning on this subject. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, For this I besought the Lord. He's talking about how Satan buffeted him. He said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient. Jesus said, My grace is sufficient for thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. How can we rejoice when we have needs? How can he be okay when we have uh, persecutions and distresses? Because when I am weak, then I am strong in him. He's saying God's grace is sufficient. Part of God's grace is his, and his ability is that he sent the Holy Ghost. So then in our weakness, what do we need for weakness? We need power. What did he do? He gave us an exchange. He said, if you'll lay down a care, lay down a worry, lay down a weakness, lay down a shortcoming, if you'll pick up praying in the Holy Ghost, if you'll pick up being filled with the Holy Ghost, what happens? Those insufficiencies are not insufficient anymore. He takes care of your weaknesses. He takes the Holy Ghost, begins to fill in the gap, so to speak. That's how I picture it. Not that I have, you know, problems with me, 
I'm one in him, he's in me. I'm a new creature in Christ. But I know this, Paul said he suffered persecutions and necessities and things that he faced. And what did he need? The sufficient grace. He needed the power. And this same man also said, I pray in tongues more than you all. How did he make up for that weakness? He prayed in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it makes following the voice so much easier. Following success so much easier. You fill up on success. You're not just trying to get it. You can pray in the Spirit and fill up on success. Amen? Well, if you would stand with me to your feet this morning, I just want to give an opportunity. Maybe everyone in here has received the Holy Ghost. Is there anyone in here this morning and you say, Pastor, I want that power. I need, I have received Jesus, but I want to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Would there be anyone in here? You'd raise your hand and say, that's me. I want the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to keep living. I love Jesus. I've received him as my savior, but I've been living without the power. Anyone in here you want to receive right here? Come up here, brother. Anyone want to join my friend here and receive the Holy Ghost? He is so good. He's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to take over. He's not going to be scary. You're just going to receive the greatest help you can ever receive in this life. Are you ready? Anyone else? I'm not in any hurry. Anyone else want to receive with him? Raise your hand. Anyone at all. I don't want to miss anybody. Come up here. Come here. Anyone else? Come on, don't miss it. You're gonna regret it tomorrow. You're gonna wish you had. How about this? Is there anyone in here? You have yet to even receive Jesus. You say, I, I, I've got to go back. I've got to receive Jesus. I don't even have that life that she's talking about. I feel that weight of sin every day. I feel that torment on my mind. I feel like I know that uh, if I were to leave here today, I know that heaven is not my home. I want to receive him this morning. Is there anyone in here you say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to make him my savior. I want to come into the family of God. I'm turning away from that life. I'm turning away from my plans. I'm turning away and I want to receive from him this morning. Anyone at all, you'd raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Either one of those invitations. I want to receive Jesus or I want to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to leave here. Either way, you say, I want to leave here different. I do not want to be the same person I walked in as. Anyone at all, raise your hand. Anyone at all. All right. Come here, you two. Let's, are y'all ready to receive the Holy Ghost this morning? Come up here. Congregation, reach your hands out towards these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. Have you received Jesus as your Savior? Have you received Jesus as your Savior? You think so? Okay, let's start there. How about we do that? Amen. And con congregation, you just consecrate yourself again. Let's pray with him. Repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God and that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again. You're my savior. You're my Lord. I come to you and I say that I'm going to live for you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for making me part of your family, amen. All right, now we're gonna receive the Holy Ghost because they've, they've received Jesus, this precious gift of the Holy Spirit. They're gonna leave here so full of the power of God. How about you this morning? All right, stretch your hands out, congregation. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Now I'm gonna pray a simple prayer and I'm gonna lay my hands on you. And when I do, you're going to feel something coming up on the inside of you. That's the Holy, that's the power of God. But I can't move your lips for you. I can't speak for you and he won't. But when you sense that, just begin to speak what it is that comes up from the inside, okay? It's gonna come on in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that both of these be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. There it is. There it is. Me so cocoa la mama se de day. No, no, sa 
Shababaye Kiki, Ama Dokosa Dadaye, Mende de Sokokoye, Membebe Shokokola, Mama Sododoy. That's it. That's it. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Meshekiona Namaye, Ola Mama Sokokonda, Mando Dodo Shebebe Yokolebi, Ama Mama Sokoye Bebe Shededeo. There it is. Oh, hallelujah. All right, hold on, let's stop real quick. Is there anyone that wants to come down here and get in on this? Anybody else? Don't miss your opportunity. The Holy Ghost is ready. Anyone else? You say, I want to leave here. Both of these receive. Oh, he, brother here's got a smile on his face. <laughs> Anyone else? You say, I want to come receive the Holy Ghost this morning. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're gonna keep praying so that you can see when you leave here, you don't have to be in church. You, I don't have to be here. You don't have to be in front of anybody. You can just pray to God. It says when we pray in the spirit, we're not speaking to anyone. You, you are speaking directly to God and he knows everything that you're saying, amen? So let's, congregation, let's pray again with him. Masiki, Ambose, Mandose, Kiyomba, Mamba, Shekeke, Ola, Mamba, Sodo, Do, 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 Se, Bebe, Be, Shoyade, Do, Se, Bebe, Be, Shokola, Mamba, O, Mamba, Mamba, Sokoko, Mamba, Maye, Amba, Sekeke, Yonda, Ah, Mamba, Shekie, De, De, Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yo, your lives will never be the change. He goes, Woo. It, it feels good, huh? It feels amazing. That power feels amazing. Brother, you can fill up on this every day. Sister, what's your name? Amy, you can fill up on this every day. This is the best high, the best feeling, the best experience. And listen, it's not a one-time experience. This is a lifetime of filling up with power, amen? Amen, I've got some stuff I want to get into your hands. Didi, right here, this lady, I just wanna get some material to you so that you have uh, more. I can't cover everything uh, here, but uh, Miss, um, Miss Delgado, why don't you go with these two and they're gonna get something into your hands this morning, amen. Give them a God bless you. Amen. God is so good. How about it this week? We're filling up. We're filling up. There's no need to live life empty, struggling with necessities and persecution and struggle when you can fill up. That's why Paul said, his grace is sufficient. One of the ways we draw on his grace and his help is through praying in the Holy Ghost, amen. Well, we wanna receive our offering for Defrain Ministries this morning. Go ahead and be seated if you would. I know some of you have come prepared this morning. If you don't know what's going on, uh, there are churches all over uh, the United States that join us for Defrain Ministries Day. It just so happens that this is our, uh, our we, we call it our umbrella portion of our ministry. Um, I was telling my husband last night, it was so sweet. We received a testimony this week uh, from one of the arms of Defrain Ministry. There's many arms. There is the television portion. There is the international travel portion. There is the United States uh, uh, traveling ministry. Um, there is the books and all the media that goes out. There is a ministerial organization that we have. So Dufresne Ministries covers the church as well. Dufresne Ministries used to be Ed Dufresne Ministries after my father-in-law. And uh, that was started first and then the church came along. So we are uh, the fruit and the offspring spring of Dufresne Ministries and part of the vision of Dufresne Ministries. Uh, we have the Miracle Crusades is another arm of the ministry. So when you're giving to this offering this morning, it is going to 
all of those. And these churches are joining with us this morning uh, because sometimes Pastor Nancy can't make it everywhere and they just wanna be able to give. They wanna be able to sew in uh, once a year to defray Ministries. Now she, some of the churches uh, that she does go to, they're also receiving an offering for her. Uh, but this morning, we're gonna participate as World Harvest Church in sowing a generous offering to Dufresne Ministries. Uh, but this week, I love it. There was uh, a young gal who wrote us and she said that last year she had uh, had a severe addiction, drug addiction. She got delivered from that and uh, got born again and got a job working for the company that does our closed captioning. And she said, uh, kind of newly, you know, saved, new to everything. She said, doing the closed captioning for Jesus the Healer broadcast, Pastor Nancy has changed her life. Every, she said, the things that she faces every day, Jesus the Healer has answered for her all while she's doing her job. <laughs> so this girl is at work doing her job that we need her to do. And she said, Jesus the Healer has changed her life. Amen. We get testimonies in all the time. My mind is free. My body is healed. My family is restored. They come in. The miracle crusades, the people getting to come because we're able, those miracle crusades take a lot of funds. A lot, I know we have them in churches, but it takes a lot of funds. It takes a lot to pack up the crew. To We've got to usually rent equipment. We've got to get to where we need to go, house everybody uh, to be able to put on this meeting. And um, I don't know if you watched last year some of those uh, Miracle Crusades, but the one in Canada, the room was packed. Uh, the, the meeting there in Kentucky that we're going to have in May, it was full. The meeting that we have in Fresno, we had to now, we don't have a church to use we had to rent a facility so this offering is going to go to sending pastor nancy sending jesus the healer sending the word out the word of faith the word of healing the power of god sending it closer that people can come and receive we're so blessed to get to receive of that flow all the time so we want to bless others amen Ushers, uh, go ahead and prepare to weigh on the people. If you didn't know, you do make your checks payable to DM and you can text DM day to 951-900-3991. Uh, we uh, allow all of that. So if you didn't have it in physical form, you can do those. You can also get online if you like to get on our website. If you're watching, uh, there's so many of you who watch online uh, watch our services. If you're not part of a church that's participating in DM Day, join us this morning. We talked about that offering, that seed sown. It goes up before God as a sweet smelling aroma. Boy, he's gonna receive something sweet from us this morning, amen? So if you can join us, we would love to have you. You can get on our website. You can text 951-900-3991. Uh, text DM, uh, DM Day. Uh, if it goes to DM, it'll go to the general account, but we, uh, Pastor Nancy may want to designate this for something particular that she has on her heart. So DM Day, and we will let you all know what came in, uh, not just from our church, but total when we get all of that sent in. It usually takes a few weeks from all the churches. So. Ushers, go ahead, pass the buckets. Um, speaking of Dufresne Ministries, we have some very special partners of ours, Mary and Norman Totten. I don't know if you've heard of them before. They watch every service from Ireland. They are so precious. How, I don't even know how long they've been partners. Josh would probably know. Come up here, Nanny Cake. They are so sweet. For, for St. Patrick's Day, they sent. So we wanted to show Mary, Miss Mary and Brother Norman that we got the outfit on all the way from Ireland. Step up, get on the step. <laughs> all the way from Ireland, they sent this sweet, for, sweet nanny cakes. 
Uh, well, they said for the wee nanny cakes. <laughs> they did. Uh, but they watch, they're probably watching or will be watching now. They watch all the services. They say they know people here. They know Josh. They know our staff. Uh, and they're partners with the ministry. So this is how far reaching and it ministers to people not just us but what you do how you serve how you release your faith how you pray how you give to Dufresne ministry touches people like Mary and Norman all over the world so thank you it's so beautiful <laughs> No, I don't know that story. Come up here. And you're so beautiful and you're white today. Isn't she stunning? Uh, she, Mary was um, just going through YouTube and she saw um, a picture of me wearing a green plaid tartan skirt. And so she thought it was an Irish singer. And I was singing with the choir that special. And so she, she started watching because of the skirt. And she liked the ministry and they became partners and they have been such pressure in, in, in communication with us all the time and send gifts. They thank Josh all the time. They think Josh is really great. We'll straighten her out, but no, I'm teasing. <laughs> But they are just so precious. They, they love the ministry and they get involved. And I hadn't seen this that they sent this to you, Nanny Cake. How cuteness is that? I'm too big. <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, stand with me to your feet this morning, congregation. Don't forget, we have prayer tonight. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. I almost forgot a special announcement. Special, special. People are getting older around here. Uh... And somebody is going to be turning 30 this year. Oh, so it's not just gonna be us. He's joined the club. He's crossing over to the other side. Grant is gonna be 30 on April 20th. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna have next month, if you didn't know, Dr. Michael Jacobs is gonna be here with us. He'll minister on a Sunday morning. That morning, we're gonna celebrate his birthday. And we want to receive two offerings for him uh, on March 31st and April 7th. Uh, we're gonna receive offerings for Grant, because that morning we'll receive an offering for Dr. Jacobs. But if you wanna bless him for his 30th birthday, that feels good to say. We're in the same decade for a whole year and a half, I think, something like that. Um, his 30th birthday, you can bring that, again, that's March 31st and April 7th. Both those Sundays we'll receive for him and we, we can bless him real good on his 30th birthday. <laughs> so turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, God bless Mary and Norman.